Do they have them or don't they? We're talking about the uncertainty surrounding the reported arrest of al-Qaeda's American-born mouthpiece, Adam Kadan. Pakistanis say that they've got Kadan and arrested him yesterday in Karachi. As for the U.S., not so sure. Pakistan under intense pressure to capture al-Qaeda and Taliban leaders. And as you may remember, Kadan is a 31-year-old California native and Muslim radical. He's documented his extreme beliefs in al-Qaeda videos, espousing the terrorist cause. As a $1 million bounty on Gadan's head, compliments of the U.S. Justice Department. CNN senior international correspondent Nick Robertson has been on the story since the beginning. So, Nick, why all the mixed signals? And do we know yet uh, for sure if, indeed, Gadan is in custody? Kira, we don't know. I mean, what's really fascinating about all of this, of course, is that he released a new videotape just yesterday calling for more attacks on the United States, a, a rally to arms for Muslims, telling them they don't need just to attack U.S. Uh, military bases, but they can attack uh, they can attack other places, other government buildings, other other facilities, to be creative about how they do it. So, so uh, the very fact that he has a videotape espousing this radical view coming out the same day that he's reported to be captured is slightly surprising. But the two sources we've had so far from the Pakistani government, senior sources, both say uh, this is the man that they've got him. Uh, there could be the possibility that there has been a confusion over the names and that it is another American uh, al-Qaeda member who's been captured in Karachi. But as we've seen, the Pakistani government has been stepping up, particularly in Karachi, catching uh, Afghan Taliban and uh, now it seems perhaps an al-Qaeda member at least. It is puzzling. We haven't heard more from the Pakistani government today. Puzzling as well that we haven't heard more from U.S. officials. But of course, when you get somebody like this, if you've got him, you really don't want to tell the world because you can use his information to your advantage. The longer you keep it secret and keep confusion around his arrest, the better it is for you to catch people like bin Laden and others. Kira? It would be, though, significant uh, for the U.S. and for Pakistani intel if indeed he was captured, right? There's a possibility of getting good information from him. The very real possibility of getting very real and useful information, um, actionable information that could lead to the arrest of others in a short space of time, information on uh, al-Qaeda's courier networks, on, on the Taliban courier networks, on safe houses, on associates. Somebody like Gadan would be an absolute trove of information. And this is information he may not reveal immediately, but perhaps over time, even though he won't realize it, you know, he'll perhaps be asked uh, to, to look at a picture of a certain person and he will be able to say who that person is. That can then go in a pool of information that's, that the FBI and others already have and that can be used by them uh, again on other operations. So even though he doesn't know the importance of the information he's providing, it's fitted into a, a, a big jigsaw, if you like. I mean, one FBI re official recently described it to me as each bit of information is a grain of sand. And out of those grains of sand, we build a beach. So it, it is that way, painstaking, but small pieces of information corroborating other sources and allowing, uh, the, allowing the targeting of, of other al-Qaeda figures or perhaps other Afghan Taliban figures as well, Kira. Nick Robertson, keep us updated on the story. We appreciate it. And attacking the interrogators in Pakistan, a suicide bomb attack in Pakistan's second biggest city targeted the Special Investigations Agency. That's where they interrogate suspected militants. The blast in Lahore killed 11 people. 60 others were injured.